going to take a look at our garden and uh, more importantly uh, the drip irrigation setup that we've got. been working on the drip irrigation for a few years and have come up with something that works and is pretty inexpensive. And so you've got a big deer fence around the garden, playhouse and garden shed, gate. Got some climbing roses and winter jasmine here. Because the soil is uh, pretty much all clay, went to raised beds and made out of uh, white oak, two by eight white oak. Been in the ground about eight years and still holding up pretty well. We're getting the garden set up. It's uh, mid-March, doing the spring cleanup, getting it set up for uh, planting, spring planting. Uh, we're putting black plastic on some of the beds, agricultural cloth on the others, uh, just to avoid the weeding. Uh, and we're setting up the irrigation at the same time. Most of it's been in place for a couple of years. And planting the ir irrigation is important in that you want to be able to just turn it on and forget about it and not have to mess with it and make a lot of adjustments all the time. So you have to think about how much water the different crops use and set it up accordingly. Now we've got some uh, different components. You need a water source. You've got a yard hydrant with good clean water uh, coming out of the ground. You've got a hose hooked up to it. And uh, I'm going to put a timer on that. I usually have a timer on there, but I've taken it off for the winter. I set it up to like run once or twice a day. And this hose goes over here to a little manifold. And uh, because the garden's so big and has so many beds, I've used a manifold so I can control it easier. You don't need one. But I've got the water coming in. I've got a pressure reducer here because you have to run the uh, pressure at less than, uh, you know, your usual 50 to 75 PSI or it'll take and blow out all the plastic hoses. So I had this uh, uh, pressure reducer just in my junk box and I've got a gauge here and then a manifold. And I've got it going to one, two, three, four, five different sections. And like if you look up here, okay, so this is this bed here is, these beds are one section. Over here is another section. So I've got it zoned into five areas. These lines kind of go underground, buried only about six inches, and then up each line. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, now, if you, if you look down this bed here, the ends of these beds, I've got seven beds here, and you can see this line coming up out of the ground, and I'll get into the particulars of it shortly. And I've got a shutoff to this, 90 degree shutoff, there we go, off, on. This is a strawberry bed that I've got mulched, a new one we set up this last fall. Uh, this line, when it comes up, I've got it ended, dead ended right here, just by folding that line over and putting a clamp on it. Plastic clamps really don't work out here in the sun, so I've got the metal clamps on it. And uh, then these lines are just poked into there with some barbed fittings. If they leak, you can just pull it out and put a plug in there and take and redo it. It's cheap and easy to work with. Then this line, it's coming out of the ground where the T is goes over here to the next bed, comes up to the next one, and on like that. This bed right here is going to be for tomatoes. Uh, just got some steel fence posts in there and, and some hog panels bought at Tractor Supply. Uh, these couple of beds here with the plastic, which we just planted and covered because we're still going to have some frosty nights. Uh, I cut like little windows in the plastic and we've got beets and carrots in this one here. And that usually works pretty good. Uh, 
and it still holds the weeds down pretty good because more than 50% of it is still covered with plastic. These other beds here, like where we're, where we're going to put the uh, tomatoes, we'll just take and uh, cut a hole where each plant goes and uh, plant the plant in it. The water is ponding here right now because we had a little rain last night, but once you get holes in there, it's not going to be have that ponding situation. So that's pretty much how we have it set up here. Uh, I'm going to take and show you the components that we use for that. Well, like I said, I've been working on this for probably about five years now, and I get my stuff from Dripworks, D-R-I-P-W-R-K-S. That if you look in the catalog and online, it's just overwhelming the amount of stuff. And I've been through a lot of it, and have found what works for me uh, in this garden. So. For the main lines, like the underground lines and the ones at the end of the beds, use this half-inch black polyethylene. Now, if there's the thin wall black polyethylene right here that is flexible, cheap, and you can poke all the fittings into it. And that's on all the lines that are up on the surface. In the buried lines, I've got half-inch black polyethylene water line, like you could buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, that's made for burial into the ground, and it's a thicker wall. But both of these take are the same size on the inside, so the fittings that will work on one will work on the other. So those are the main lines, and I'll show you how we connect those shortly. The water coming in, Okay, this is what I have for a timer, just a spring wound timer. You wind it up, come out, you can come out once a day when you want to, to put it for however many want, minutes you want. Usually about 30 minutes is fine out here. And then it runs through a pressure regulator just to drop the pressure. This one's 20 PSI. Uh, and you do that once or twice a day, or you can get the battery operated kind that you can program. Also, on any of your hose connections, water coming in, you want to make sure you have a filter screen on there because uh, little bits of grit and sediment, if you have a well in particular, uh, can clog up a lot of your lines. Now, the main lines, they go together for these screw type fittings, and I'll show you how they work. Now, the thin wall half-inch line, the main lines, these barb-type fittings, you just force them on there. It works good on a hot day. Then after it's on, there's a, a screw ferrule that you just screw on here. Screw it on real tight, and that locks it all together. And this is one of those shut-off valves I was showing you, one of those 90-degree shut-off valves. Uh, at the other end down here, this is a regular fitting that is made for the heavier wall polyethylene, the, the water pipe polyethylene. But it all fits together. Sometimes a propane torch will soften this up if you need to. Just soften it a little bit to make it easier to put together. And then just put a, a regular hose clamp on there. So that covers the main lines. Now your other lines that come off, they're just regular quarter-inch lines. All of them are quarter-inch. Now, the ones that I have running down through the beds are what they call drip lines. Tried a bunch of different kinds, and this works best for me. You can see that this one, about every eight inches, there's a little bump in it and a little hole where the water drips out. And I'll show you how these work comes on a roll, you roll it out on a warm day and it straightens out, or you can take a couple of, uh, a piece of uh, like 14 gauge fence wire, galvanized fence wire, bend it into a U to stick that down or put a rock on it or something. At the end of it, you've got a little plug to plug it up. These little fittings are dirt cheap. They're like pennies a piece. So like if you damage this or you hit it with a, a trowel or something, you just take and cut it, 
and stick this barb fitting in there to stick it back together. Now with the quarter inch lines, you can only go a certain distance, like about uh, 30 feet at the most, because the inside is so small. So you have to take and plan that. So our 16 foot beds work great for that. So all the beds have this drip line in it. And I you know, plan the planting to, to go along with how I've got those laid out. There's also an, some other fittings here. This one is called, a, I think, a drip emitter. And most of these things are called emitters for some reason. OK, and these, they stick onto the regular line, stick onto the regular line, and then it drips out of the side here, like you would put this at a base of a big plant. And like this one here is 4 liters an hour. This is 1.5 liters an hour. So it, uh, depending on how big the plant is, you choose those however you want them. These are little sprayers, which you'd use like little fan sprayers, which you'd use like in a, a uh, flower bed. This yellow thing is a little punch that you use to take and, and uh, punch a hole through these lines. Uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. There we go. So you got a hole in there. Then you just take and pop this in there. On a hot day, it's a lot easier. Two hands, it's a lot easier. There we go. All right. So that's in, and that'll stay, and it generally won't leak at all. Or if it does leak, you just pull it out, and you stick, these are called goof plugs, stick those in there to, to repair it. So uh, also another thing we've got out here for the for bigger things like berry bushes, this is a thing called a shrubbler, and you can see the little dozen holes in the top. It lets water come out uh, in a little, almost like a little umbrella, and you can screw this top to control how much water comes out. Uh, let's see, also here is just plain quarter inch line, like for making connections as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and turn some water on. I'll show you how these things work. Coming past the peach tree here, we're going to take and I'll show you a couple of the beds where the water is coming in. The drip lines are. You can see this bed, we've got two lines running down it. Valve is turned on, and you can see the little wet spots here that it's generating along the length. So when you do your planting, you have to kind of plan on uh, where the lines are. Like in here, you could either have three rows. You can have like one, two, and then one on the other side. Or if you needed just one main one, you could scoot these over into the middle like that. Uh, or if you haven't, you just space them out however you want them. Those can go under the dirt or on top of it, under any mulch, under the plastic. Doesn't really matter. Here's a bed next to it. And you can see it's in the same situation. Also, with some grapes and things like that, I've got a hoop set up around each plant to kind of get down to the roots. Bed of peas is. Snow peas, I believe. You see, we've already got some competition with some weeds. but. There are some peas coming up. Now here, again, we have two lines, and we just have a line on the outside of each of the windows that we've cut. And that works, works well. Here in this bed where we have carrots and uh, beets, we've got, well, down here you can see a line kind of popping out. And so we've got two lines underneath these two strips of plastic, which take and provide the water. So two lines, you can normally take care of an entire bed, 
Occasionally I put three lines, and if you need that, with the versatility of this system, I'll show you over here. Like here, I've got the two lines going under the plastic. You know, if you had a situation where you had a wider bed, you could easily just poke a hole and add another line, or if you don't want it, you can pull it back out and plug it back in. Uh, plug it in with a, one of those goof plugs. So anyway, that's how it works, and it works well. And it's not very expensive, really.